Hi everybody, in this video I'm going to show you how to um, take your exploded assembly that you created, the presentation file you just finished in the last step, and to turn that into an exploded assembly drawing file that includes balloons and a parts list. Pretty simple concept. Um, so far what I've done is I've created down here with Inventor 2017, I have an animated exploded assembly. The OC comes apart. And the thing about Inventor 2017 is a little bit different than other previous versions is now that I have this view here of everything exploded. Notice I clicked on the fast forward button to get to that. What I can do is I can create a new snapshot. So I call that view one. I could also, if I wanted to have one of it completely assembled, maybe I call that a snapshot two and that's view two. You can name these whatever the heck you want to. Um, so maybe I'll call this one exploded and I'll call this one here assembled and I can give them different names. So now that I have that, I'm gonna save this file. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go create a new drawing file. And for our class, we actually have a custom title block. You won't get that little pop-up. I'm going to name my file exploded assembly, or actually I'm going to call it mini train exploded assembly. Now you know what, just mini train. Miniature train is good. I should probably make these decisions before I start recording my video, but for us, we have a little prompt that, that pulls up, and that's because of the type of title block that we're using. It's a custom one for our class that includes our school logo and the Project Lead the Way logo and stuff like that. So anyway, I have my title block in a place. You may not have to deal with any of that. What we're going to do is we're going to place a view first. The base view that I'm going to use is, notice it pulled from my it pulled from my uh, exploded train assembly, which is right here, the presentation file. I have a couple of them because I've done this more than once. So it automatically pulled up with that, but the difference is, is I don't want the assembled view. Notice I named those. I want the exploded view. So I'm going to start with this. I'm gonna get this thing kind of situated the way that I want. I think that's too small of a scale, but one to one is way too big. Let's just keep monkeying around until we find a good size. 0.5, you know, that, that looks pretty close. Let's use that one, okay? I'm also going to make sure that my view is shaded, so it's actually colored. And I'll place a file like this, a picture like this. I'm going to drag it over to the bottom left corner. So that's a pretty good start. Now, what I want to be able to do is add a parts list. In order to do that, I'm going to find that that's in the annotate tool. Um, nope. Yes, over here in annotate, it's in parts list. I'm going to create a parts list. The view that I want is of this. Notice it filled in that automatically. I'm going to leave all this stuff for now. Click OK. It's going to ask me where I want to put the parts list, so I'm going to put it up here. I can automatically see now that kind of gives some overlap. I don't like that, but things will change in just a second. Before I go any farther, I'm going to replace two. What we're going to do for my class, I'm going to double click on this, and it's going to pull up a table where I can edit things. I could go type in descriptions if I wanted to, but I'm going to go to column chooser. I'm going to get rid of the description column because it's blank. There's no reason to have it. But I am going to add in the one that says material. And so this will make my table look just a little bit different. I'm going to click OK. You see now it has each material listed off to the right-hand side. I don't like how that takes up multiple lines. I'm just going to now drag this around until I get it to be kind of the size that I want it to be. So around there where it flips from one line to two. There we go, okay? I'm gonna do a little bit of organization, just move this down a little bit. In fact, I'm starting to see now that maybe, perhaps, my um, my view is a little bit too big. So I'm gonna double click on this and just change it from 0.5 to maybe 0.4. Shrink it down. And now I can go in and I can add in balloons. Balloons are just a way to identify what part one is, part two, part three, part four, so on and so forth. Um, I can also go, and you know what, that's pretty convenient, why don't I do that? change these, make them a little bit smaller. Gets a little crowded, but maybe that allows me then to come back here and do 0.5 for my scale. So you can see, um, again, planning is a good thing when making videos, but you're seeing how I'm, I'm modifying things and how easy it is. To add balloons, very simple. I just come up here to the balloon tab and I click on each part individually. You'll notice that it auto numbers. So if I click the train and I come over here, and I right click and continue. It places a balloon that says part one. That's because it's item number one on my list, the train body. I need to go find a wheel. Here's a good one. Right click and continue. Now I have one for part two. Notice if I do the wheel down here, 
it's also labeled part two because that's part two on the file. So I don't want to label each one. I should have nine unique because I'm nine parts in this. I should have nine new, unique balloons, um, one for each part. And I need to arrange them in such a way where nothing overlaps. I'm not going over the borders. And also, I don't have any repeats. You should be able to count balloons one through nine. If you're missing any numbers, you've done it incorrectly. Hopefully that video helps. I get you started on how to do the exploded assembly with whatever view you want to, the exploded view, with the parts list that you've modified to include material instead of description and a balloon for each of the nine individual parts.